What's happening? It's Shane here, and I am very excited to make this video today. We are gonna be talking about the 10 different types of jobs. And the way I'm gonna be approaching this is I'm gonna talk about these jobs in terms of the experience that you have while doing them. So this isn't gonna be like doctor, lawyer, uh, you know, firefighter, anything like that. It's gonna have more to do with the actual experience that the person doing the job has. And so I'm gonna be grouping a bunch of different types of careers together because people tend to have relatively similar experiences in these careers. And I think this is going to be a very informative video because you really wanna figure out what type of job you wanna have and then set that as a goal for yourself that you want to reach in the future. And that's gonna make everything so much easier for you because then you can figure out, okay, this is my goal and then you can work backwards and figure out the steps you need to take in order to get there. Now, before we get into it, let's make sure to gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Let's set a goal of 1,500 likes on this video. So number one on the list is going to be a normal job. We're just gonna get this one out of the way right now. This is by far the most common one out there. So some things about having a normal job, and honestly, this could be anywhere from like an entry level job where you're a cashier or you're stocking shelves, all the way up to somebody who's been working 20 to 40 years. And this is basically a job where you work like a nine to five, you're working those normal hours, you work five days a week, uh, then you have the weekend off. While you're at work, you're relatively busy, and the work that you do will probably range from you absolutely hate it to it's mildly enjoyable. But it's definitely not gonna be something that you love, right? It's not gonna be a passion, it's not gonna be your calling or anything like that. Now, a lot of normal jobs are going to be relatively relatively crappy. And I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. I think most people in the world are going to have like a normal job at one point, And it's a pretty good growing experience because, you know, let's say your first ever job is actually a really good job. You're never really going to realize how lucky you are. And you're not going to feel grateful because you don't understand uh, that that is, you know, where the bar is set, right? You don't understand that a lot of jobs, most jobs are kind of like down here and the really good job is up here. But most people's first jobs are gonna be crappy jobs. You might be working at a restaurant, you might be working at fast food, stocking shelves, etc. You are gonna realize how lucky you are. So it's not a bad thing to have like a normal job, but eventually you do want to try to move into one of these other types of jobs and which one you move into is going to completely depend on your personality. So number two on the list is what I'm gonna be calling a warm body job. And this is because you basically just need to be a warm body. So they're paying you just to be there essentially, right? To be kind of like on call every once in a while. And so a few examples of this would be maybe a security guard, right? So you're a security guard, you're supposed to just kind of sit there, watch the televisions to make sure there's no people walking around. Every hour, maybe you walk around the, the premises or something like that. But essentially, most of the time, you're not gonna be doing much. Another example of this, and this is what uh, one of my friends did during college, is he got an overnight job at a hotel. So he was basically just the person who was at the desk overnight at a hotel. Now, he told me that uh, during his eight hour shift, he probably only had about one to two hours of work to do. Every once in a while, maybe like two or three times a night, somebody would come up. But for the most part, he didn't have anything to do. And so what did he do? He was very smart about it. He studied for his classes while he was working the job. So he was literally just getting paid to study. Now it did have very weird hours. And so that was kind of a downside, but overall he paid for most of his college by doing that. And it was just a really good gig for him specifically because he didn't really mind the hours. Another example that I know of is a guy who worked as an IT guy at a factory. And this was a factory where they really didn't need very much IT help. Uh, again, during an eight hour shift, he would probably only work one to two hours. And then the rest of the time he had pretty much to himself. He could do whatever he wanted. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? And so he was able to actually build an online business while he worked at that factory. So again, he was getting paid to build an online business. Now there's different spectrums here. There's people who it's like truly just like warm body where you're pretty much doing zero work the entire time, all the way to maybe you're doing like four to five hours of work in an eight hour shift and then you kind of have like three hours off. If I'm being very brutally honest here, in my experience, uh, a lot of government jobs tend to be like this where there's honestly not a lot of work to do and they spend a good amount of time just kind of like 
surfing Facebook or the internet or playing chess online or whatever. I had two different uh, government related internships and in both of them, that was my experience. It's also been my experience when I've talked to people. Generally speaking, government jobs are very cushy. You don't have to do a lot of work. And so during those types of jobs, even if you're not trying to start like a side hustle or an online business, you can take care of your bills. You can order your groceries online. You can get a lot of work done while you're at work so that when you're out of work, you can do whatever you want with your time. You don't have any other obligations. So these jobs can be very sweet, again, for the right person. Uh, there's other types of personalities where you would just be bored to death in this type of job. Number three on this list is going to be a lifestyle job. And this is basically going to be working for a company that provides a very nice lifestyle, right? So uh, one example of this would be working for one of the big tech companies in Silicon Valley. They are very well known for treating their employees extremely well. So we're talking uh, Google, Facebook, Netflix, etc. There's an acronym for this, it's FANG, and that stands for Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google. And then there's actually two A's, so the other A is Amazon. And these companies essentially just treat their employees extremely well. Uh, they give them like super long breaks. They provide free food for them. Free, complimentary, free, whatever you want. They give them all kinds of different employee benefits. Google, for instance, will bring in famous people that give talks and you're allowed to stop whatever you're doing and go listen to this famous person like Ryan Reynolds or something, uh, give a speech. And in some cases you can actually talk to them personally one-on-one, -on -one, so it can be really good for networking. In a lot of these offices, you're allowed to do your work on bean bags. There's gyms at the office, you can go work out at the gym. Now imagine a place nothing like it and a million times better. There's just so many perks that they offer you and it's just a pretty good experience overall and they really try to keep their job satisfaction of their employees as high as possible. Now I've talked about this before on the channel, you can kind of check job satisfaction. I think the best website is probably glassdoor.com, but there's also other types of companies where let's say you're somebody who wants to travel a lot, right? So you know, you're somebody who wants to travel to other countries, for instance, or all over the United States, that might be a lifestyle job as well. So you could get maybe a consulting gig, for instance, and then you would travel to different companies across the country, maybe even different companies across the world, and you would get to enjoy all of these different cities while you're there. So that would be another example of a lifestyle job. Now, some people that would be a nightmare, right? You wouldn't want to travel. Uh, you want to be home, you know, near your family, or you're just kind of a homebody. You don't want to leave all that often. So again, very person to person. Now the next one on the list, number four is actually very similar to number three, and that is going to be a prestigious job slash stepping stone job. So essentially this is where you work for a company that's very well known, like a company that is at least a fortune 500 company. And it has a brand name that almost everybody recognizes. Now, a lot of the time uh, prestigious jobs fortune 500 companies are also going to be lifestyle jobs they're going to treat their employees relatively well but sometimes they don't and so that's why i made two separate categories for this but almost all the time and it's kind of unfortunate that this is the way things work but almost all the time if you get a fortune 500 job it's going to look a lot better on your resume than if you got a job with some kind of mom and pop shop. And the reason for that is because HR, hiring managers, and business owners are going to recognize the brand name from that company. And subconsciously, it's going to trigger what is basically, uh, you know, they think, okay, the HR managers from that company thought this person was okay. And so therefore, you know, it's probably safe for me to think this person is okay as well. That's also known as social proof. Social proof is a very powerful concept in sales, marketing, and just psychology in general. And it's kind of stupid in my opinion. It, a lot of the time it doesn't make sense, but that's just kind of the way that the world works. Because of the fact that they see that you made it through this other company's hiring process, they automatically think that you are worthy of making it through, or, or at least more worthy, of making it through their company's hiring process, right? So in many cases, you might even take a position where you don't necessarily want to stay in that position, but it's just because of the fact that it is for a company that you think has a very good brand name, like it's Fortune 500, maybe even a Fortune 50 company. And so therefore, after working there for a few years, your resume is going to look very, very good, and you're gonna be much more likely to get the dream job 
that you want. So whenever I'm helping people out with career stuff, I'm consulting with people, unfortunately, the you know objective blunt truth that I have to give them, you know, if they're looking at two different jobs, is it's probably best for your career for you to go with the prestigious or you know stepping stone type company. Now, after you get some experience with them, then you can go work for whatever company you want to, but you know your resume is gonna look very, very good. Now, number five on the list is going to be a remote job. This has become more and more common for obvious reasons in the world over the last few years. And again, this is something where a lot of people aren't going to like it and a lot of people are actually really enjoying it. So I did a poll on my channel where I basically asked people, would you rather work in person or remotely? And 57% of people would rather work in person and 43% would rather work remote. So actually pretty even there and it shows that a significant amount of people do actually want to work remote job and I can see why because there are a lot of upsides to working remote now basically you know I went on vacation last year I went to Puerto Rico and I met several people who were working remote jobs right so there was one person for instance she was doing the same exact job getting paid the same exact amount as before everything happened in the world but she was working remotely and she was able to basically do her eight hours a day and then at night every single night she was you know having a good time enjoying paradise there was another guy i met a long time ago that meeting him actually kind of changed the course of my life in many ways uh, he was basically a database architect and he had a remote job as well. He was very, very good at what he did and he got paid a ridiculous amount of money to essentially work like around 10 hours a week on average. So I don't remember the exact figures, but it was like $200,000 plus per year and he was working 10 hours a week. Now that of course is an extreme example, but you know he was able to live a very, very nice lifestyle as well. He was always going on vacation. I think he went on vacation like once a month. And then when he wasn't on vacation, you know he would be doing his work in coffee shops and at different restaurants and that's kind of like where I ran into him so yeah remote jobs can be extremely appealing for many different reasons and for the right person that can be a fantastic choice and remote jobs do tend to be relatively easier than doing the same work in person just because you don't have to be like face to face and it's almost impossible to micromanage somebody who's doing a remote job not always but they do tend to be and many people who work remote end up not doing nearly as much work as they did in office. So for instance, if you're working like a 40 hour job and you were doing like 30 hours of actual work per week, if you're doing it remotely, maybe you're only doing 20 hours or 10 hours of work per week. And because of this, a lot of people who have remote jobs will actually do side hustles, kind of similar to a warm body job. Um, and then many actually get a second job. So they're getting paid twice as much to do the same amount of work essentially. Now, number six on the list is going to be a good manager job. So if you ever want to go into management, you're gonna have to realize that it is a ton of work, right? So if you accept a manager job, a lot of the time, and I'm just, just being honest here, like you're pretty much gonna be on call all the time, right? Because you know, you're gonna go into work, you get off work and then somebody calls in and then you're gonna have to be texting people. Um, about like, hey, this person called in, can you cover their shift? There's just like so many things you have to do as a manager. And so you have to realize that there's a lot more responsibility and you're gonna be working a lot harder. But with that being said, a good manager job is going to compensate you for all of that extra work for one, and for two, it's gonna be teaching you leadership and management skills, which are invaluable. Now you can use these leadership and management skills to either move up in the company and become like an executive or you know something like that, a very high paying job, or you can use those leadership and management skills to start your own business. So having a good manager job can be great for the right person and the right personality, especially if you're somebody who is wanting to learn leadership and management skills and improve that area of your life. Now, number seven on the list is going to be a bad manager job. And this is something that I have seen over and over again. What a bunch of companies will do is they will take a position, right? Like a position, let's just say you're making $50,000 a year, just to make it simple. And then they will have people who work in that position, they'll give you like a 10% pay bump to like $55,000 a year, maybe $60,000 a year, 
in order to be a manager. Now you are gonna be doing probably twice, maybe three times the amount of work, but you're only getting paid 10 to 20% more than the other people who are working in that job. I have seen that so many times. It's a trap, run the other way, almost never going to be worth it if companies are being super cheap on you like that. There's other manager positions in smaller companies where you're essentially like the CEO of the company, like you're running the company, but you're only getting paid as a manager, right? So the person who owns the company is just making a ridiculous amount of money and you're the manager, you're doing all the actual work, but you're not getting paid jack squat. Okay, so you really want to, I mean, I guess if you wanna get some experience or something, you know, and there's no other way to get it, you know, get yourself a bad manager position and then transfer over to a company where you're getting a good manager position, but you really don't wanna get stuck in one of these. Uh, one company, for instance, that I know of, um, when people would get into the manager position, they're basically stuck there. there. There was no way of getting out of it, right? Because so many people were falling into this trap and then they were like, you know what? I would rather not be a manager and the company was like, well, you know what? We're not gonna let you have your old job. <laughs> so you're screwed. <laughs> so yeah, definitely try to avoid those types of jobs. Number eight on the list is going to be a career or a calling. So this is gonna be something where you are doing a job where, you know, it's probably gonna keep you busy and stuff like that. And you know, you're getting paid a good amount, like definitely enough to live and enough to be happy. But the big thing about a career or a calling is you're really happy with the career itself, right? So it's not just that it has high job satisfaction, although that definitely does help, but the job has a good amount of meaning as well. So you're doing something that's extremely meaningful to you and therefore, over the long term, it's really going to make you happy and keep you happy, right? So this is something you see pretty commonly in like medical careers, for instance. Um, they can be very challenging. You know, you work really hard, but at the same time, they do have relatively high meaning scores. And I've talked about this in many different videos because you know that you are helping people out. You're truly doing something that you're helping others out. And it's something that, you know, not only makes you happy temporarily, you know, like job satisfaction would, but it also keeps you happy over the long run. So this is something that again, can be a fantastic choice for the right person. The next one on the list, number nine is going to be a high paid employee. So this is somebody who is making a ton of money, but they are still an employee. So the best known examples of this would be a doctor, of course, um, certain types of lawyers, they can make a really good amount of money. People who work in the finance industry, that's another great example. Also, sometimes executives at bigger companies can fall under this category. And this one and the last one can be a great choice for a certain personality type. If you're somebody who kind of just wants to work, you know, earn an honest living, uh, and then go home and just enjoy the rest of your life and work is kind of just work to you, then uh, that can be a fantastic choice. And you can actually get to the point where you're making millions of dollars a year. Um, oh yeah, another example would be sales in some cases, like high ticket salesmen. Uh, they can also make hundreds of thousands to even millions of dollars a year as well. Now usually as a high paid employee, it's gonna involve a lot of leadership and management skills, and it's also going to take up a lot of your time. So you're probably gonna be working much more than you know 40 hours a week, and it's gonna be more than a nine to five. But you will likely be compensated for all of that extra work and you can make a heck of a lot more than normal people would in a nine to five. Now there is a slight difference between number nine and number 10 on the list and number 10 is basically an intrapreneur, not an entrepreneur, an intrapreneur. So an intrapreneur is also going to be a high paid employee, but it's gonna be somebody who is more innovative than the average employee, right? You're not somebody who's just keeping the ship running. You are somebody who is actively working to steer the ship. Like you are saying, you know what? We're not gonna to go to this island. We're gonna to go to this island. So you are essentially replacing the person who originally founded the company. You're doing Doing basically everything that they did. And again, this is perfect for certain personality types. There's certain people out there that entrepreneurship is just a little bit too random. There's too much chance and there's too much risk involved in it. 
um, and they don't want to take that chance. So what they'd rather do, because they're somebody who's still very innovative, very creative, they would rather take a company that's already doing well and then just improve it. I think an organization that has done a fantastic job hiring intrapreneurs is Amazon. So you see that Amazon comes out with all of these different types of companies that are like sub companies under the umbrella company of Amazon. So for instance, they came out with Amazon FBA, which is essentially where they let anybody sell stuff on their platform. And then they basically just let the free market do its work and the best products rise to the top. Another company they started was Amazon Kindle. And whenever these new companies were started, they had people who they put in charge of launching the products, right? So they had these people who were essentially intrapreneurs. They were still working for the company itself, but they told them like, this is what we wanna do. This is the job. You know, they had some limitations, like this is how much money we're allocating to this. Uh, this is how much time you have, et cetera. But overall they were like, you know, go ahead and do it, right? This, these are, this is what I need you to accomplish. Go ahead and do it. So entrepreneurs are very similar to entrepreneurs, but I think what they kind of lack in some ways is they're a little bit more risk averse. So they don't want to take as much risk and they also like to be creative, but they like to be creative within the confines of a company, right? So they want to have that stability of having that company, having that you know normal paycheck coming in every two weeks or every month, but they also wanna have the creativity to express themselves and come up with new innovative ideas. So if that sounds like you, entrepreneur might be a fantastic type of job or career for you to go for. Now, one thing I wanna mention is some jobs are a combination of a bunch of these, right? Some jobs might be a combination of a bunch of different ones. But overall, these are the different types of jobs that I have seen over and over again, and I kinda of categorized them and gave them names. If there's other ones you think I've missed, go ahead, comment down below, let me know. And uh, also, uh, if you haven't done it already, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you, and I will see you next time.